Today at ShopDap.com, we're here with Charles, the Hummer mechanic, and we're going to be showing you component locations on a 2.0 TTSI engine. Okay, so here we are in our engine compartment of our Tiguan. This is a 2.0 TSI engine, and we can take a look. We're going to remove our engine cover. Pretty much all TSI engines are going to have a similar engine cover to this with some slight variation, especially with Audi models. But we're going to remove that so we can take a look at the valve cover here and this setup here. So here we have our intake manifold here. Here's our oil filter location, oil pressure switch on this side. Here's our coolant bottle. This is the coolant level sensor, which actually runs down to the metal level sensor that actually runs inside the coolant bottle. That is part of the coolant bottle, so that's not serviceable separate. We have our AC high pressure switch down here. Then moving over to the valve cover, we have our ignition coils across here, PCV valve, PCV valve hose. Here is our N80 valve. And here's our intake air temp sensor. Just so we talk about this, N80 valve is something that's also called the EVAP purge valve. It controls the flow of fuel vapors that come from the gas tank actually and burn into the engine. This is for emissions purposes and often can potentially fail and they're pretty common to have that happen. Next we're going to have our throttle body which is right here attached to the bottom of the intake manifold. That is something that often can fail as well and they also had issues with wiring on the connectors themselves. They do get updated uh, in some way. So I'm going to let Charles talk about the other side of the engine compartment. As we move over to the driver's side of the engine compartment, we have our high pressure fuel pump. We have our vacuum pump, which supplies vacuum to the brake booster. We have our intake manifold actuator and the solenoid underneath. There's a bank of three connectors right down here. That is our connectors for our NOx sensor, as well as the injectors and the fuel pressure sensor inside the fuel rail. Moving over, we have an airflow meter in the airstream right past the air filter. And then over here, we're looking at the connector junction for the front oxygen sensor. Here, of course, is the vehicle battery. Next to our battery, we have actually two fuse panels. We remove this. The fuse junction on the front of the fuse panel is called the SA fuse panel. The fuse panel on the top is the SB fuse panel. And then inside the vehicle, there's actually one or two more fuse panels called the SC. That's on the driver's side, and if applicable, the SD fuse panel, which will be on the passenger side. Now, one thing I forgot to mention was on this, the timing cover right here, there is this magnet. This controls the variable valve timing of the camshaft. This is called a, a magnet. It actually uh, engages and disengages that setup there, which there is a control valve in there that mounts in the camshaft. That part can have issues around uh, oil control, uh, so that is something that does happen from time to time. And one thing that Charles mentioned is the fuel pressure sensor, which is actually located straight down here in between these ports of the intake manifold itself. One thing on the cam uh, variator or cam adjuster and the cam sensor is people a lot of times will get the cam sensor confused with the cam adjuster. So always remember the cam adjuster is on the front side uh, or the passenger side of the engine and the sensor is on the cam shaft itself right in the middle uh, on top of the uh, cam bridge or cam ladder or valve covers, another thing a lot of people call that part. Yep, and one other thing that we, we want to mention uh, that is a common issue around TSI engines is the valve covers leak. There is no valve cover gasket. They use an anaerobic sealant, which we'll have links to just so you can see what that is, the anaerobic sealant for the valve cover. So when that happens, you actually, actually have to physically remove this valve cover, which is uh, the cam bridge itself holds the camshafts in place and reseal it with that anaerobic sealant. Yeah, that is a, essentially a timing component as well because it does hold the camshafts in their place. Okay, now we're underneath the vehicle. We have our engine here. We have our transmission here. We have our engine oil pan here, transmission oil pan here, drain plugs for the transmission and for the engine. Here we have our pendulum mount. This actually controls the, as the engine uh, torques, it's going to want to kick backwards at the bottom. So this prevents that from happening. And then in the subframe itself, you have the pendulum mount. This would be upgraded on for vehicles that you want to have like an insert that you put in there to stiffen this up that prevents the engine from moving around a lot and will prevent uh, wheel hop. Now I'm gonna let Charles go into a little bit more on the front side. Up in the front, we have our after run coolant pump. 
We have our AC compressor solenoid. This is what controls the output of the AC compressor. Our two fans right here. Our main fan also has the module built into it. The small fan is simply just a dummy fan module. Our boost piping, our boost pressure sensor. On the front side, we have our condenser, our charge cooler, and then our radiator. This is a coolant pipe right here with a coolant temp sensor in it. We have our transmission distribution block on the front here of the transmission. All of the transmission electronic connectors are on the driver's side of the transmission. We have our starter bolted right onto the transmission as well. Of course, wiring that runs through, our serpentine belt down at the bottom. And in the front, behind the grill, is our ambient air temp sensor. As we look underneath the passenger side of the engine, over top of the axle, you'll find the turbo. And on the turbo, you'll find the diverter valve located here. You'll find all of the turbo oil and coolant feed and return lines. And you'll also have the N75 valve, which attaches to the turbo itself, which controls the wastegate, which also would be located on the turbo itself, the wastegate. Now attached to the turbo itself is going to be, have a flange. This is the downpipe that goes down to the catalytic converter. In the rear of the vehicle, after the catalytic converter, we have this is our rear oxygen sensor. The front one's going to be located near the turbo itself, and this measures catalyst efficiency. So if the cat's not doing its job properly or you have a high flow cat, that's what's going to set faults is that sensor right there. Thanks so much for watching. There are some variations as far as differences on TSI engines, so I'm going to let Charles talk a little bit about some details that you might find that are major differences on those engines. Yeah, so we're working on a 2015 Tiguan automatic today, obviously. Uh, a couple other cars that are going to be a bit different, the cars with the CBFA engine code have different water pump, have secondary air, so you're going to have a couple of different or extra components there, as well as the GTIs with that oxidation sensor inside the radiator, which is a little Thing epoxied into the radiator. It's kind of goofy. From the best I can tell, it sort of acts as like an early detector of thermostat failure. So if you're getting that fault, you may actually have a bad thermostat or a bad radiator. Uh, it comes free with a new radiator uh, from Volkswagen or from Paul. <laughs> Buy it from Paul. He's better. But overall, the, the main components are going to be exactly the same or really darn close that will at least get you in the, the ballpark of where you're trying to work. Yeah. From a parts perspective, those, car, those engines are very similar with a few of those variations that he mentioned. So, but overall, the application of, the, of what we've talked about in this video is going to apply to pretty much all models that look exactly like this. So yeah. thanks so much for watching. We hope this video is helpful. Make sure you check out Charles's YouTube channel. I'll make sure we link it in the description below, as well as all his social channels. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Ding the bell. Ding the bell. Wait, I have never talked about Ding the bell. bell.